Well, hi there. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. I am your host, Steve Lopez. Thank you for clicking on this link and joining us for this video presentation. You'll notice up here in the left-hand corner, it says Chess Base Lite 2009. That is correct. The programmers have asked me to show new users some of the features of Chess Base Lite. Did this in print. Oh, I guess it's been about two and a half years ago we did this in the old Chess Base Workshop uh, print column on the internet, but now we're going to do it uh, in a video format, basically show you the same things, but show you step by step how to do a lot of things in this program. Also, if you're a new Chess Base user, if you have the full version of Chess Base and you'd like to watch these, you may pick up a few things as well. If you're new to Chess Base and aren't quite sure how to use it, all of the stuff you'll see in this series of videos is also applicable to the full Chess Base program. What I'm going to use in these videos is the unregistered version of Chess Base Lite. Chess Base Lite can be downloaded off the internet at www.chessbase.com, basically where you're watching this. And if uh, you're smart enough to find this video, you're smart enough to find the download. You download it, install it, and you have an unregistered version. Um, that means that there are some crippled features in the software. Some things are not going to work in the unregistered version of Chess Base Lite. But I'm going to show you all the things you can do in the unregistered version. To register, what you do is basically you pay some money to Chess Base and they send you a registration key. You enter it into the software and it unlocks some other features that you don't have access to in the unregistered version. Um, what we're looking at here are some databases that I have that I use in my regular chess base program. But what you're going to find when you open this up for the first time is you're not going to see any databases at all. So what you're going to want to do is go find some databases. You can get them on the internet. We're going to talk about it first a couple of different formats that you can use. Um, here we go. In, uh, in your chess base program, in chess base light. There are basically two different formats. There's the chess base native format and PGN format. PGN stands for Portable Game Notation, and what portable means is it can be ported. It can be moved from place to place, mainly from program to program. If you have another program that you want to use, let's say a game playing program uh, that's not produced by ChessBase, that you want to use a, uh, a game out of a ChessBase database in, you can export it in portable game notation, and that other game will read it and you'll be able to use it. Portable game notation has some disadvantages, though. What it basically is is a glorified text file. If you were to find a single game from the Midwest Class Open out there on the Internet in PGN format and you were to open that file up in Notepad or any word processing program, you would see it exactly as you see it in the screen right now that you're looking at. Uh, what it does, it has all of the header information in a very specific format and it has the games done in a very specific format. For example, one dot and a space. There always has to be a space between the period and the move for white. Then another one space. If there's extra space in there, it messes up the database. It's no longer PGN format. So it's a very regimented, very specific form of text file where everything is done just so, so that it can be read by a whole bunch of different programs. And this was actually developed on the internet, uh, I guess probably 15 or so years ago, as I recall, about the mid-90s sometime. There's also two chess-based formats that you can use, chess-based native formats, CBH, um, chess-based database, CBV, as we talked about in the very first or second chess-based workshop video, what a CBV file is, is actually all the different files that make up a chess-based database compressed into a single file with .CBV as the extension. Um, that's basically how you're going to find these on the internet. If you find games in chess base format, you're generally going to find CBV files. Otherwise, you're going to have to download a whole bunch of individual files, and that's a real grind, and nobody wants to do that. So, CBV is the way you'll generally find chess base uh, format databases on the internet. Otherwise, uh, what you'll find an awful lot of times is PGN, Portable Game Notation Databases, which are, as I said, glorified text, vi text files which chess base reader can read. So let's go back over to the reader. Um, when you download a PGN file onto your hard drive, please make a note of where it's at because it is not my job or anybody, anybody else's job to tell you where you downloaded something. When you download something from the internet, you can put it literally anywhere on your computer and we have no way to know where that is. So when you download a PGN or a CBV file, 
what you do is make a note of what folder you put it in because you're going to need to know that information for the next step, which is this. We're going to tell Chess Base Lite where that database is. You go to the File menu, come down here to Open, and you see Open Database. Bada bing, and actually it opened right to where I had, uh, I, I've been in this folder before, right into where I downloaded it. I downloaded a, a PGN database right into the CB Workshop uh, folder I created on my hard drive, and it is this file right here that I'd like to open. So I click on it, puts a little check mark next to it if you're in Vista, otherwise it highlights it if you're in an earlier version of Windows. You'll see it down here, click open, and bingo! It opens it right up, and here's all the games from that database. When you close that window, you'll see you now have an icon for it here. Let me take a side trip for a minute and talk about uh, one of the limitations of Chess Base Lite if it is unregistered. And that is that the database size of any individual database is limited to about 32,000 games if you don't register your Chess Base Lite. To give you an example, here's my Mega Database 2009. When I click on it, I get a pop-up. The program has not been activated yet. You can only view about 32,000 games. Please enter an activation key to get full access. And of course you have to buy an activation key to get it. So in the unregistered version, I can only use about 32,000 games. And as an interesting little side note here, I will tell you I remembered this when I looked at this window pop-up earlier today, that back when I started with ChessBase back in 1992, the largest database that we offered was 33,000 games. And that sounds kind of funny now, but when you had that 33,000 games, boy, you thought you were the stuff. You thought, man, i got a ton of games here. I'll, I'll never look at all this. I've got every bit of information in the world. Now the Mega Database, by the way, the, the new version of the Mega Database has over 4 million games in it. A lot of that has to do with the Internet, with just the, the rapid dissemination of information. Now a tournament is played, and even if it's some small minor tournament that you otherwise probably never would have heard of, um, they rush to get those 35 or 40 games up onto the internet and so there's a lot more games being played that are being seen by other people now. They're not games that get played in small tournaments and no one ever sees them again. They get out on the internet and they wind up in these large databases and that's a relatively recent development within the last again 15 years or so. Let's go ahead and go to my uh, database I've just downloaded here. When you click on a database what it's going to do is going to pull up in this window down here a uh, scrolling view of all the games in the database. It's sort of a quick way to get to the games. Another way to get to them is if you double click on the icon, you get that other window that we saw. It pops open. It's a separate window which shows you all the games in the database. Either way, if you double click on a game from either view, uh, either in this game list or in this one, the game will pop open and there we are. And we're looking at a chessboard and the notation of the game play through a game out of your database. There's a couple different ways to tackle this. Um, one of them is the arrow keys, the cursor keys on your keyboard. And that's my preferred way to do it. I use the cursor keys a lot. Just by tapping the right arrow key on my keyboard, I can just bing, bing, bing through the game. Just play through the moves just as you're seeing here. Another way to do it is you'll notice there are some arrows underneath the board. They're also duplicated up here by the way. These are called VCR buttons because they work just like VCR. Uh, before DVDs, <laughs> kids, <laughs> we had movies on tape that were played on video cassette recorders, VCRs. So this is a throwback to the old days. You had VCR buttons on the front of your VCR unit and on your remote control for people that were too lazy to get out of their chair. And you could click on these replay buttons, replay arrows or VCR buttons below the board to also step through the game. And you can go through forwards and backwards. If you look here, I'm clicking on the forward button, but if I want to step back a few moves, I can go back a couple moves and wind up here. And uh, what we see, by the way, if I can get them to come up again, I have a, another feature of the program activated, which is a feature that shows threats. You'll see arrows come up on the board, uh, which show you potential threats that one player or another might do. Unfortunately, it's not popping up at the moment. Oh, there we went. Now, now it does it. Just as I get done talking about it, it doesn't. But what it'll do is it's going to show you uh, potential threats in a position. You can turn it on and off. It's an option in the program. I'm leaving it on because I'm feeling lazy today, and rather than um, trying to come up with these threats by staring at the chessboard, here we go. Um, black could jump his knight to here and, and threaten the bishop. Just very simple stuff. Nothing real elaborate. 
um, but it's just a neat little neat little tweak that we can do in the program. So you can also go forwards and backwards through the game by using the replay arrows. You go here, it jumps to the end of the game. You go here, it jumps to the start of the game. And uh, we just jump around like this. And a third way to do it, by the way, um, is if you go up here, if you click on a move directly in the notation, like right here I'm going to click on 19, knight e5, it jumps you right to that position, which is real handy especially for those of us that grew up with a chess book in one hand and a chess board on the table, moving the pieces around with the other hand. And then if you came to a variation line, you had to get another chess board out and play through the variation. And if that variation had sub-variations, you had to get a third chess board out to play through those. And it was a real pain in the butt. And this is just so, so, so much better, I'm telling you. This is just cool. And oh, look at this. We have a couple threats here. The knight moves here. We'll uncover an attack by the bishop on this knight. Kind of a cool little, uh, cool little feature here. It's not necessarily what black is going to play here, but the potential is there in the position. In fact, black plays bishop e8 instead. But that's another way to play through a game, and there's yet another way to do it. Instead of just clicking on moves, clicking on arrows, another thing you can do is you can go up here to the game menu and click replay and what this does this is for the uber lazy this is for people who don't want to click buttons or you know press keys on a keyboard you can just click replay and the game will just play by itself it's good to move the, the box by the way so you can see the notation and see what's going on you can adjust the speed with the slider right here make it go a little faster a little bit slower and if you get real impatient and you do want to jump ahead of move, you've still got those keys here on the keyboard. Or I'm not keys, I mean these uh, buttons here in the display, these green arrow buttons. And um, you also have a pause button. If a position looks interesting, you can pause it while you stare at it for as long as you want to. And then when you want to move on, just click the continue button and the replay will continue. And you can just sit back with your cup of coffee, as I'm doing right now. Give me a second here while I take a sip. and uh, just watch the game. Very simple to do. If you get done uh, with the replay, you want to go back to punching through the moves manually, you can click the stop button, and the replay stops, and now you can go back to using the cursor keys to move forwards and backwards through the game, or using the VCR slash replay buttons down here below the board. You want to close the game? A couple different ways you can do it. This little X right up here, that's real handy. You know that from a zillion other Windows programs. If you click on that red X, you close the game. Also, hitting the Escape key, which you can't see because I'm using the keyboard, hitting Escape also closes the game. So there you go. That's your basic idea of how to play through a game using chess-based light. Now, a lot of people ask me questions about grandmasters and masters and how they use this software. I'm going to tell you the truth. I have worked with several strong players, master level and higher, a couple of grandmasters as well. And I'm going to tell you that they use chess base very similar to the way people like you and I use it, uh, the average player, which is it is a game viewer. Um, I've talked to a couple of grandmasters who I will not embarrass by naming them, but I've actually worked side by side with them where I taught them, I, I taught them about features in the software that they didn't even know were there that I use on a near daily basis. Um, what they typically will do is they will just double click on a game and they'll sit there and play through it at super speed and believe me when I tell you they do watch games about this fast um, the couple guys that I've worked side by side with have, have watched games at about this speed and when you get to the end they hit the F10 key on the keyboard to go to the next game by the way, that's another neat trick, is if you want to jump directly to the next game in the database, hit F10 on your keyboard. And then they play through the moves at about this speed once again. I'm not even trying to follow this. My mind's in neutral right now. It's just blowing me away. But again, I won't, I won't name these guys' names, but they do watch about that quickly. Get to the end of the game, and we F10 again, and now we have another game to go through. And this is how these guys use it. Um, there aren't little secret grandmaster features of this program that a lot of players don't know about most of the grandmasters I work with use this as a game viewer and they just play through a lot of games really fast just as we're doing right here 
So there's no real secrets to this. But that's your basic function. That's your basic feature of chess base is to load games and play through them without having to fool around with that chess book and that chess board or if you have an annotated game, multiple boards. So play around with this, get used to it, and then we'll get back here again next week and we'll go through some more features of Chess Base Lite to show you how to use this software until we get back together and do this again next week. Have fun!